Good morning, everyone. My name is Yin Xiong. I'm the chief architect of uh, Pass Platform at Huawei. As Sam just mentioned, that yesterday we officially joined the uh, foundation as a gold member. Uh, there's no better time. Thank you. So there's no better time for me to stand here to talk about Huawei, to talk about Huawei's Pass Platform, what are we doing there, and talk about our experience with Cloud Foundry. Get my slides here. Yeah. So our PaaS platform actually supports multiple scenarios. One of the scenarios is a CAS, Communication as a Service, which I will focus a little bit on for today, this morning. Now, first of all, about Huawei. How many of you heard or know about Huawei before? Not today, not to yesterday. That's good. It's more than expected. That's great. But anyway, Huawei was uh, founded in 1987 in Shenzhen, China as a telecom equipment maker. So traditionally, we were hardware companies. But we still make a lot of hardware. But last eight, 28 years, the company has grown to a leading global ICT company. By ICT, I mean the information and the communication technologies. So Huawei provide wireless, wireline, and network services, network product, and network solution. But also, we provide enterprise IT technology, such as storage, we have our own database, and uh, storage services, computer server, and end-to-end -end data center management solutions. So as you see from this slide, last year, year 2014, we have uh, our revenue reached $46 billion. We're really growing fast. By the end of last year, we have about 170,000 employees. We are one of the big companies in China. Of course, we are one of the big companies in the uh, globally. So today, the company is in the middle of transformation. Uh, we started a couple of years ago. As many of you know already, the cloud computing, the big data, the uh, IoT has significant impact on telecom industries. Our customer, telecom service provider, they want SDN, Software Defined Network. They want to virtualize their network functions. They want to use the compute, cloud computing model to manage the network, to control the network, which they have built over years. They want to open up existing network capability quickly to the users to, more, to reach more developers. They want to quickly develop new apps, new network function apps, where they can expose to, to the users, to developers. Now, we, Huawei, want to need the innovations. We want to help our customer to realize the SDN and NFA visions. Now, we have a strategy called Softcom. Now, Softcom is an open network architecture. We will abstract the, func the network function from the hardware. So we're talking about software-defined switches. So we're talking about software-defined routers. We're talking about software-defined firewalls, software-defined everything. So those software network function as a software, as an application, they're going to run the cloud infrastructures and they're managed by the platform. That's the soft convergence. They want to help our customer to realize the SDN and NFA visions. Now, how all this related to Cloud Foundry? And after all, this is a Cloud Foundry Summit, right? And we've got to talk about a Cloud Foundry. A little bit of experience a history with Cloud Foundry. Although we joined the Cloud Foundry as a gold member yesterday officially, but our experience with Cloud Foundry actually started uh, back in 2013, where we have a group of people, about 50 people, working on the uh, Cloud Foundry, and play with us, play with, uh, play around with Cloud Foundry. The last year, we released an internal version of our past platform, we call Mushroom Cloud, that's based on Cloud Foundry. What you see in this slide is a home page of the Mushroom Cloud. If you can read the word, if you can read the home page, let me know. Besides the number, the, so far we have more than 4,800 applications deployed. We have more than 35 users has registered that they go to Mushroom Cloud, they deploy the applications, they uh, manage the applications, they monitor the applications. Although those applications are not production, applications yet, but we really see a tremendous interest in our platform. We really see a tremendous interest in the Cloud Foundry technologies. 
people want to know what's Cloud Foundry, what's the architecture, how they work together, how, can they scale, yeah. can, how they monitor the applications. So we see a tremendous interest in the Cloud Foundry in, in, within our companies. Now, back to our scenarios. I mentioned earlier that we support many scenarios. Now, each scenario brings us a different set of challenges. Of course, you know, different scenarios. Now, today I want to share some of the challenges with you, and hopefully in the future, work through the communities we can resolve or solve or address some of the uh, challenges that we are facing today. Now, in the NFA scenario, where the past manage the life cycle of NFA applications, now, in this scenario, the NFA application is very sensitive to the network status because they are network applications. So how do, where to deploy these applications, how many instances we deploy, and where to deploy, how to deploy, is actually governed by a model. And that's different than, as unique, and it's different than traditional IT web applications. And that's a challenge for us, too. Additionally, most of NFA applications, they are distributed, complicated application with multiple components. If we deploy each component as a container, then those containers need to communicate each other, right? They need to communicate each other directly without HTTP protocol, because they are network functions. Another one big challenge to us is the monitoring systems. For if an application die, from this detection all the way to full recover, it needs to happen in seconds, if not milliseconds, because they are network applications. So we cannot just monitor the resource, like CPU, the memory, and, and I.O. We need to monitor the performance, the application performance indicator, like a response time, in order to respond to achieve that monitoring goals. Second scenario, communication as service, which I will skip or talk about later on this. Like in many other big IT, enterprise IT, we have, internally we have thousands of applications. Every day we have hundreds of applications in the queue to be deployed, to be upgraded. So in the IT scenarios, the large scale deployment, the deployment speed, how fast it can deploy, is the key to our IT scenario. Can we deploy 300 or 400 containers per minute? Can we do that? Can we have hundreds of uh, deployment requests at the same time for different applications? Can we do that? Those are challenging to us and to our, our customers too. Last but not least is Huawei Public Cloud. As some of you that Huawei will launch public cloud services later this year. Our past platform actually will power and support the public cloud, which we're really excited. But at the same time, we face many challenges. One of the, as I have public cloud experience personally, the managing public cloud is a huge undertaking to us. So we want to make sure the past platform, the platform we build, the every component has to be secure independently, and every component has has reliable under stress, and every component can has a HA design. Without this, you cannot manage public cloud. It's critical. It's important. Now, let's focus on a little real scenario, the simple scenario is CAS, communication as a service. CAS is not new. There are quite a few uh, cloud-based CAS services out there. Now, we want, to, we want to share our CAS experience, how our platform and the cloud founder play a role in the CAS overall solutions. So what's the problem we try to solve? I mentioned earlier, the cloud computing, the internet, has significant impact to the telecom industries. Traditionally, for enterprise to build a voice, a video, enable applications, it's a long process. So how quickly get these capabilities out there for, for app to use to build and enable the communication enable application? That's the problem that we try to solve, and this scenario we try to solve, and our password will be part of the solutions. So what is that solution? Now, we start with the simple but effective solutions. We have, you can review the solution two layers. One is the CAS API layer, which is hosted on the platform in the cloud. The second layer is CAS backend, where it resides in telecom network. 
in on-premise. So it's kind of a hybrid cloud. But with the CAS API, the users, the developers, can discover this API, can subscribe it, and can just use it as a simple as develop other applications. So how exactly we're using it? So we have built a CAD API Surface Broker using Cloud Foundry Surface Broker mechanism. With CAD API Surface Broker, we have a catalog API. The developer can go there to browse the catalog, browse the API, to subscribe the API they need to, and they don't have to subscribe all API. And our past platform we will create an API instance, Surface instance, and monitor the API for them after they subscribe the API. Of course, we will scale it if you need to. Now, another part of important uh, part of the solution is we have an integrated API management solution, which is based on open source. That integrated into the CAS API layer, so that we can secure, throttle the API. We can monitor API SLA. This is very important. If you open up your API in the cloud, the security, the throttling, and the managed SLA is so important. Now, I want to show you a few use cases in these scenarios in CAS. And the use case so on is very simple. The point here is you can build a voice enable application in hours, even nine minutes. Just call the CAS API through the URL. And the pass CAS backend will take care of the call, put the number you put there in your applications. And you can schedule the call anytime, and then the CAS backend will make a call by the sequences you put in your applications, and they will connect in a voice with two parties together. Just so easy and simple. Now, this use case should be a little bit more complicated, but it's really cool. In this use case, a camera is registered to the CAS platform through the CAS HDK. And you can pull the camera to monitor your family room, your living room, or your bedroom if you want to. <laughs> and then once the camera detects emotion, you make a call to your cell phone. And your cell phone can answer the call and can view the videos from your cell phone. Really cool. And you can, want, you can monitor your room. What happened in the bedroom, you can monitor that. And additionally, your cell phone can call the CAS API to actually control your cameras, control your cameras, how you, the angles, where you want to monitor. This is really cool. By the way, we have this real demo in our booth, Booth 108. So if you are really interested and want to learn about the CAS and then want to see the demo, please start by Booth 108. Another simple scenario. Just to show you how simple it is that you can develop communication-enabled application, uh, applications, uh, doing tests, develop, and deploy on the same platform within minutes. It's really as it is. It's simple with your API there. So as a summary, and also conclude my uh, speech, I would like to say with open technology, there are a lot of opportunities in the telecom industry that we can innovate to help our customer uh, in the cloud-based transformations. And we are committed to work with the community to build a robust, to build a robust uh, quality, advanced pass platform to help our customer for them to innovate in these areas. You know, at the end of the day, you make your customer happy, right? For that, I thank you very much for your time, and I hope you enjoy your rest of the summit. <laughs>